let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, this battle with Vince, that's really what it is. I mean, the Crockett's are trying to expand nationally. That's the reason they're going to be trying to get this TBS spot. We know that Bill Watts has had his program on that show before. We know that Georgia championship wrestling had been on that show before, but a lot of people are assuming, Hey, some of these other territories, the business is drying up. Vince has taken over. Perhaps the only option is to go national in order to compete with Vince or risk your territory winding up like all the others. And it feels like that really becomes Bill Watts, Jim Crockett, and Vince McMahon. It's sort of a three-way dance. Like none of the other territories were trying to compete with Vince. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. It's the big three there. Yeah. You know, there are other guys that we, uh, we left out that were players. Sure. But not to the level of those three guys, you know, McMahon, then Crockett, then Cowboy. And it was thought in our circles that expanding was the only way we're going to survive. It sounds, it sounds, that sounds maybe not a good business acumen, but that was what our thoughts were. We have to grow or we're going to die. And I think in general, in business, it's that way in any business, you really got to grow or you're, you're on your way to dying. Growth is imperative. So, uh, yeah, that was the big three there. And it was that way for a while, but that, that three way dance, shall we say, didn't last long. Well, we should mention that, you know, TBS is obviously the biggest part of that national battle. So Bill's trying to get ready for that. And at the same time, trying to adjust once he realizes he doesn't have it. Some of those adjustments include a transition from Boyd Pierce to you and Bill Watts would write that he was too Southern to make the push. Um, talking about Boyd or me. I thought he was saying that about you. No, I mean, about, about, about Boyd. And that's the reason he replaced you with Boyd. Is that not the case? Yeah, that is true. Yeah. That is true. Connie. What can you, we haven't spent a lot of time talking about Boyd Pierce here on the program, but obviously he's sort of your predecessor here. Can you educate yeah. some of our younger listeners about who Boyd Pierce was to you? Well, he would have been a great character on hee haw. He was funny. He did impressions. Uh, he used to imper- impersonate a, a humping bulldog, a male bulldog. He did it all the time in the locker room. It's funnier than shit. Uh, but he, Boyd was a salesman, traveling salesman. And he sold premiums and gimmicks, ink pens and notepads and all kinds of stuff like that. And he had a route or he, he had his, his uh, people that he saw in these little stores. So that's what Boyd did. And he was a, he was a hell of a salesman, but he was funny. And, and Boyd, the great thing about Boyd was Boyd knew his limitations and maybe more importantly, he understood what his role was. His role was basically hi, everybody. I'm Bill Boyd Pierce alongside Cal and alongside Bill Watts. And this is mid South rest or something like that and say, and here's Bill. Then the next time you'd hear Boyd at any length was when he would say, thanks for being with us. <laughs> we'll see you next week for another exciting episode of Mid-South Wrestling. <laughs> so he basically was Bill's guy. When Bill needed breath, Boyd said something. But he was he actually, I thought he was a better ring announcer than a commentator. Not that he was a bad commentator, but his voice was distinctive. It cut through the clutter, broadcasting and ring announcing. So, but a swell guy, a wonderful guy. And, uh, you know, he, he, he had been in that chair a long time, never held any animosity toward me. Uh, it was never rude. Wow. Was, was never unfriendly. Nothing. He just was, uh, always a sweetheart of a guy from Burleson, Texas, boy, Pierce, yeah, good that, man. That wasn't even your experience in the WWF. So I'm glad to hear that, you know, there was no resentment and he handled you well. Yeah. Let's talk about some other changes. Not only is he changing, he being Watts pronoun boy, uh, from, uh, Boyd Pierce to you. He's also moving out of the boys club there in Shreveport for TV into arenas. 
I guess the idea is we want this entire thing to feel bigger. We don't want to just feel re- regional or local. So yeah. let's do TV in an arena. what do you think? I, obviously you're in favor of being on the show and taking Boyd's spot. what do you think of the decision to get out of the boys club and into the arenas for TV? Well, it gave us a better look. It gave us a big time. Look, a major league look, if it was shot correctly, you know, three or 4,000 people can look like 10. Uh, so it's just a matter of the camera placement and how the show is shot. Uh, I liked it because the, the venue that we landed on was Tulsa. That's where I lived. So, you know, the schedule was, I was talking to some guys last night in Oklahoma city. The old schedule was every other Sunday afternoon at two o'clock, we'd have a show, a live, live event house show in OKC. And then when the guys would finish their matches as they finished and they got their rides together, they would drive over to Tulsa. And the 75 five mile an hour speed limit is just under 100 miles. So you can imagine it didn't take long. And guys would drive to Tulsa from Oklahoma City. And then that night on Sunday night, starting at seven o'clock, we would do two one hour UWS shows. And, uh, Nothing really changed how we did the one hour shows, but just the name changed. So it was pretty cool. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I was home and I had, I had so many media contacts, just from friendships and promotions and spending little uh, advertising dollars with them, things of that nature that I got a lot of stretch media stretch. So, so every other Sunday night became an event, a regular event. That you could schedule, you could bring your family to whatever. So it was, a, uh, it, it worked that what that part worked out well for me. Bill Watts would write this. Jim Ross was not only an excellent announcer, but he also became my right hand man. So we replaced Boyd with Jim, which hurt Boyd's feelings, but that was the way things were as we tried to keep pace and survive. I haven't been around as many people as brilliant as Jim. And he was the kind of guy who, even when he was mad at you and would cuss you in private, would always give you his all and remain loyal. Jim had a tremendous impact on my life. Man, when you read something like that from a guy who was your mentor, that's got to make you feel good, no? Pretty humbling. Yeah. Pretty humbling. Yeah. He always had a way with words that slick talking rascal. Uh, Hey, look, I got a PhD in pro wrestling from Cowboy Bill Watts. And... Aside from his personality quirks, uh, you know, that some people like to point out, you know, Michael Hayes will still talk about the bad payoff he got in the Superdome, things like that. But at the end of the day, all those guys that sat under the Watts learning tree and were booked and managed by the Cowboy were, were better off for it. Because a lot of them, if you go back and look at that territory that Crockett was buying, a lot of those guys ended up as major stars in the, in the world of wrestling and many of them at WWF at the time. 